Shane Frocky Game here, and welcome back to some more Monster Hunter World content. Anyways, it's not like anything else I normally do where it's gameplay footage or anything where I'm like playing the game, but I'm gonna be going over the top 10 monsters I want to see come to the Iceborne expansion for Monster Hunter World. But I'm gonna split it up into two groups. I'm gonna do a top 5 on ice monsters in general, and then a top 5 on just other monsters that aren't ice elements or anything. Anyways, I'm going to be going over their environment, their behavior, and their abilities. So anyways, let's get straight into things with number 5. Coming in at number 5 is the Jade Barith, which its habitat, unlike their bog-dwelling relatives, which we actually get to see in Monster Hunter World, the Jade Barith inhabits the frozen wasteland of the Tundra. Here these large theropods live a tough life as food can be incredibly hard to come by, along with having to deal with the large local predators that inhabit the environments. The behavior of the Jade Barith is somewhat temperamental and prefer a wide berth, and can be docile, if not provoked. But if angered, these creatures can be a living nightmare, as they will relentlessly charge, bite, tail whip, and stomp their targets until they are dead. But moving on to the abilities, the Jade Barith is capable of performing U-turn charges through the snow, head slams, and shaking off its snow to inflict snowman on the hunter. But anyways, I mostly like the Jade Barith concept in Iceborne as probably a beginning monster just to get you introduced to the new ice map since there's already the base form of the Barith in the game. I just feel like it would be a good way to just kind of ease people into the new higher tier with just a creature that we already know just with a special piece to it which is being another subspecies which i absolutely love the concept of and i feel like world really needs a lot more of so anyways moving on to number four Coming in number 4 is Berioth. Berioth inhabits icy areas such as the tundra or the snowy mountains, where the roaming herbivores of which it preys are large and plentiful. The Berioth is highly aggressive and territorial. It will attack any hunter that enters its domain. It will eat popo and Anteca, I think that's how you pronounce it, when fatigued. The Berioth's abilities are that it can move quickly and attack wildly, wildly, presenting a challenge even to experienced hunters. Berioth uses its fangs and claws to slide around on the ice, making it hard to keep up with. It is able to slide its tail on its side and wield it like a club which can cause the ice blight status it can use its claws and wings for a homing glide attack from the sky on unsuspecting prey it is capable of producing a wind blast Berioth will spit out an icy ball that will create a powerful tornado. However, this wind blast will not work while Berioth is fatigued. Berioth can and will perform side jumps and dodges similar to other pseudo wyverns. In general, I just 
think it's a cool monster that I would love to see added to world. Especially if all the rumors are true, which everyone's just about certain at this point. And Narga Cougar will be making a return. So anyways, that's about it for, a number f for my number four pick. So let's get moving on to number three. Coming in with third is Anorupatisu or something like that. I don't really know much about this monster because it was really hard to choose all through the actually rather few ice monsters that were listed. But I'm going to be going through what little information even the Wikipedia has. Starting with the fact that it tends to live in the Polar Sea. Very little is known about it, except for that it is a flying wyvern. It's blue and its main feature is its long, barbed horn. It also has a fin on its back, and its tail is shaped like the one of a shark. It can swim through thick ice with the help of its spiked horn. Its barbed horn is highly similar to that of a sawfish or a carpenter shark. Anyways, that's all that's really listed here. So, I'm going to get moving on to my number two pick. Coming in second of my ice monsters that I want to see come in the Iceborne DLC is Zamtrios. Zamtrios inhabits the icy frozen seaway and Arctic Ridge. Its behavior is it's a predator known to launch surprise attacks on prey from beneath the sea ice when and when sufficiently threatened or enraged it will secrete a reactive fluid through its skin, which solidifies into an ice-like material forming an armor over its skin to prevent damage. For its abilities, Zamtrios is capable of shooting powerful torrents of water from its mouth to blast away enemies. It can also travel beneath the ice to launch ambush attacks on prey using a specialized reactive fluid that it secretes through its skin, it is capable to encase itself in an icy armor similar to that of Glacial Agantor. The armor also forms a long and jagged spear on the end of its snout. The reactive fluid that forms the armor can be spat by Zamtrios to immobilize its prey in addition, it can also fill itself with fluid and swell up its swell up to massive proportions. In that state, it is capable of rolling and jumping on top of targets in an effort to crush them. That is the part of it that really makes me want to have Zamtrios in the Iceborne DLC, because I mean it it is possible. It is very similar to the way that the Great Jagras works, and the Great Jagras is already in the game. So it's not the biggest stretch to have another creature that can bloat itself out and use that as a weapon. And in general, I just like Zamtrios as a creature. I mean, it's a shark that can give itself ice armor. What's not epic about that? But anyways, let's get going on to my final pick of the ice monsters. Coming in at my number one pick of the ice monsters I want to see come to the new world in the Iceborne DLC is You Can Loss. Its habitat? You Can Loss has only ever been encountered in remote frozen regions in the old world. It has been found exclusively in the further re furthest reaches of the snowy mountains. 
in the New World, it has been sighted in the polar field close to the sea. Moving on, it's a, it's a behavior you can lose, lives a solitary life, and is fiercely territorial to anyone who intrudes upon its land. For its abilities, its massive serrated shovel-like chin allows it to fling up large chunks of ice and to dig into the frozen icy surface. Once underground, the row of a large razor-sharp fins running along its spine helps it cut through the ice while swimming. It can produce an ice beam from its mouth and is known to use its heavy body weight to crush opponents. Despite its great size and weight, Yukanlos is known to be able to leap significant distances. Anyways, the main reason I want this monster in particular to come to the new world is we don't really have much in the way of really big monsters that pose too much of a threat. We have the event monsters that are really big, but we have nothing that's just like normal. So yeah, that's really the main reason I want him to come over. So anyways, let's get on straight into the normal monsters I want to see come over. Coming in fifth of my normal monsters that I want to see really can't be in a without you can loss and vice versa it's a cantor found in the battleground the lava canyon and in the ingle isle acantors are highly aggressive and predatory and are shown to be more than capable on taking down a gravios they will attack and kill almost anything on site often letting out a deafening roar before charging head-on. A canter's abilities are so powerful, they can have extremely negative effects on the environment they reside in. Predator and prey flee from a canter, and only the largest wyverns and elder dragons even dare challenge them. That's all that's really said for you can loss for what I'm going over. So anyways, let's get straight in to my number four pick. Coming in with my fourth pick is Mitsune or something like that. Anyways, it's habitat is the Misty Peaks and primal forest. Misune isn't very aggressive towards hunters. However, males have been known to go berserk during the maiden mating seasons, attacking anyone who comes across them. This rage is the reason hunters are requested to hunt them. Misune's abilities are that it's Able to breathe bubbles at its enemies, and able to produce these bubbles in its fur. It is unknown at this time what the bubbles do, though many believe it hinders the movement of prey. It can also fire pressurized jets of water from its mouth, much like Plesioth. So, for the most part, I want this monster because it'll be a leviathan something that we don't currently have in monster hunter world though if i'm correct a lot of work was done to try to get them to work but back then they just weren't able to fully get the leviathan skeleton to work in the game but that was back a good year ago and they've had plenty of time to work on it perfect it and i feel it's about time to start getting 
more shapes of cre creatures to be able to give us even more variety in the monsters that we're able to fight. So anyways, let's get moving on to my number three pick. Coming in at my third picks is Tigrex. Tigrex can be found in many different environments, like many wyverns. It will travel far and wide in search of prey. When ideal, Tigrex will assume a bipedal gait, standing only upon its hind legs while holding its forelimbs to its side. When threatened or engaging prey, however, it will stand upon all fours and ready itself for combat. It will usually attempt to intimidate would-be attackers with an ear-splitting roar. If combat becomes intense enough, it will flush blood to its forelimbs, face, and eyes in order to give its skin a bright and red glow as an attempt as an effort to further intimidate attackers. For abilities, as a quadrupedal wyvern, its wings have evolved into forelegs, which allows it to run at very fast speeds. Though it possesses a pair of aquatically developed wings, it is rarely seen flying in a traditional sense. It is in fact more prone to glide from location to location it has a powerful set of lungs, which gives it the ability to produce extremely loud concussive roars, which can physically damage nearby objects. Unlike other many other monsters, Tigrex does not attack with any elements, a trait it shares with the Monoblos as, it, as its cousins. Rather than relies on the sheer brute strength of an ear-splitting roar, to bring down opponents. Tiger X, really, I just feel like it's another monster that is just well known in the Monster Hunter franchise and just should make its way to world. And besides that, there's not really much else to it. So anyways, I'll see you guys with my second to last pick of monsters I want to see come to Iceborne. In second place comes Durambaros, which if you don't know why I want this monster in world, you'll understand after I'm done explaining. With its habitat, due to its diet, Durambaros is most commonly encountered in highly forested areas such as the flooded forest or Misty Peaks. For its behavior, Durambaros is a herbivore, sustaining, prim sustaining itself primarily on fallen tree trunks, using its ram-like pair of horns as well as its hammer-like tail club. It's known to push over, knock down weak or dead trees in order to comfortably feed on them. Though generally docile, Durambros has a capacity for aggression. If provoked, it is known to use its tail club, horns, and overall mass to attack foes. One of its most unique tendencies is to twirl in place using its tail club as a counterbalance to build up momentum, allowing it to hurl itself at an attacker and crush them with its body. For the most part, that there is why I want Durambros to come to the new world. We don't have any, like, really silly monsters that still make... And, like, this one, they give, like, a reasoning behind why it attacks like that. And how it's able to. And I just think it would be fun to see a giant monster hurling itself towards, the, towards you through the air. So anyways, let's go and check out my number one pick for the monster that I most want 
to come over to the new world. Okay, and coming in first with- Hey, hey, put the pitchforks away. No. I know this is not at all original, but it had to be Nargakuga. And it's because it's rather obvious that there's like a 95% chance that it is coming. Those eyes on the trailer, um, there's no doubt in my mind, those are the eyes of a Nargakuga. But anyways, getting into it, Nar Nargakuga is normally and mainly found in the Great Forest. But it can also be found in the Old Swamp, Old Jungle, The Jungle and the Jurassic Frontier. The behavior of Naga Cougar is it's careful and cautious. It is very easy for it to sneak up to a hunter. Naga Cougar lives in dark places that it has adapted to. It rests on high trees that are hard to reach, or maybe can't be reached, so hunters can't catch it by surprise for capturing it. Naga Cougar will wake up when hunters are right in front of the tree due to its natural senses. Narga Cougar has the ability to attack with almost every part of its body, mainly its bladed wings and its spiked tail. Its head can be used for biting, similar to Tigrex. Its bladed wings are used almost for the entire battle, and deal high damage. Its tail tip, which can be cut with a white bar of sharpness or above, is extremely dangerous. When in rage mode, its tail spikes will, will protrude until it gets out of it. Narga Cougar also has extremely strong muscles that let it jump long distances and tall heights. Personally, I feel like this monster would fit beautifully into the ancient forest. Or if they decide to go with a lot of different locations in this new area, just in general, any forest-esque type place. And it would be really cool to see it since the evolution of the capabilities that they can do. If instead of us hunting it, you ended up in its area, and it started hunting you. But anyways, that's really it for this Monster Hunter video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and subscribe for more. If you do subscribe, be sure to hit that bell icon to make sure you don't miss anything. And if you really enjoyed the video, be sure to share it with your friends. And anyways, I'll see you next time. Bye.